What's up, everybody? Welcome to Skate Date. Skate Date in our living room instead of in the garage. Why are we doing it in the living room? Because it's really windy. It's really, really windy. So um, our garage is really loud when it's windy because the wind just bangs against the door. And also, we have a bunch of things like and rafters and so we're also genuinely concerned that we're gonna die every time it's windy and we're out there so we decided that we would still bring you an episode of skate date but it would be slightly different because the background is different and the audio is obviously a little different for you people listening on the streaming services she decided I did decide because I put our safety above putting out an no, episode that still, has perfect sound. To still have an episode, you decided. I wanted to be like, oh no, it's windy and scary. Let's just cuddle and do nothing. And she's like, so what do you want to talk about on skate date? And I was all cuddled up with Bowie, chilling like a villain. And now I'm here. You're literally two feet from where you were before. It's more comfortable over there, and I wasn't talking. I was on TikTok, just like mindlessly going, uh, uh, and then sending it to her, even though she's right there. Yeah, good times. And Bowie was like, much and, like what he's doing right yeah, now. So that's why I pulled him up here because he missed being in Two Girls One Pup. Anyways, Skate Date is a podcast brought to you by two roller skaters um, that are sort of in love. And yeah, we talk about what's in the real world and the will world. I'm Shov. I'm Rebel. Together we're a shovel. Can you dig it? Bowie can. I can too. Can you? <sighs> yes. Yes. Anyways, yeah, for y'all listening, we are snuggled on the couch with Bobo in the middle. We've got an ambiance going. We've got some candles over there. My altar is lit up. And we just had dinner, so we're nice and tummy full. I'm not. I've been feeling blah. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll get to that in the wheel world. So today we're going to talk about... I forgot that we chose what to talk about. We're talking about shopping. <laughs> <laughs> not shopping shopping addiction being a shopaholic that is what we're talking about today and then we're going to talk about restarting derby and all the pains that our bodies are going through right now growing pains yes so um what did you do this last week babe i don't crap i don't remember i filmed for you oh yeah we... a lot yeah, we started a couple of really <laughs> dope videos. We're starting a new series on my YouTube channel. If you're lucky. That's going to be really exciting that I'm not going to tell you about yet because it's a secret. <laughs> and I, I think my big accomplishment for this last week was that I got, I made a string of ghosties. So I made a ghosty garland. We're watching scary movies every night except for tonight. We won't. But <laughs> that's fine because it's super unrealistic to literally watch a movie every single night. We did night. last year. Well, we also already missed a day because one of the nights we watched Walking Dead. That counts. I don't know that that counts. It counts. But okay. Spooky, scary, zombies. 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 All right. So. So before, before we jump in. <laughs> It's a fake ad. Nope. It's a real ad for a fake business. <laughs> no, it's a real ad. It's a fake ad for a real business. No, it's a real ad for a real business. I think you're confused, babe. Okay, whatever. So it's for what shop, babe? Tears for Queers. No. Mirrors for Queers. No. Deers for Queers? No. Cheers for queers. Kinda. Cheers to the queers. That's it. Cheers to the queers dot com. <laughs> it's my website and little shop. And I just wanted to tell you all that I just restocked. Like, actually, okay, I restocked those super cute heart sunglasses that you love, babe. Mm -hmm. But I just got a bunch of new stuff in. Um, I have been ordering and making and dreaming my little heart out and finally everything is almost ready. Um, 
We have one more thing that's gonna drop like coming up soon, but besides that, there are new earrings. There's cherry earrings. There's magic eight ball bracelets. There's moon earrings. Those are your favorite, right? Oh. There's laces and there's socks. socks. There's pride socks, rainbow socks, and it's a one -stop shop. it really is a full one-stop shop. And um, very, very soon there will be reverse tie-dye sweatshirts. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so if you are a person who enjoys treating themselves and is a shopaholic like us, then or feel free to be a shopaholic or a giver from my shop, cheersofthequeers.com. And if you're like, oh my gosh, the holidays are coming up, I need to get a bunch of stuff, and like, there are skaters in my life, or even there are non-skaters, and I just like cute stuff, people in my life, then Cheers of the Queer Shop is where you should shop. Because that would be really great. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Oh my gosh, there used to be this thing, this game that we would play at camp, and it was like... <laughs> Thumbs up seven though? No, 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 no. It wasn't thumbs up seven up, although that was also a fun game. But it was like a song and be like da na 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 da na 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 and then it'd be like thumbs up and then they'd sing it again and then you had your thumbs up and then it'd be like thumbs up, elbows out. And then it was like thumbs up, elbows out, shoulders back, head tilted and you'd like sing it and you like kept doing all these things. Anyways, that's what that reminded me of. But shop to cheers the queers shop, so I don't feel sad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> should we jump into the real world? Duh. Bowie is so loud right now. Okay, he's so he's happy to be here. He's just I'm happy to be here. <laughs> he's just happy to be here. He has his nice little rainbow collar today on because it's National Coming Out Day, and he wants you to know that he's out. he's gay. Oh god, let's get back on track. Okay, so in the real world, we are talking about shopping and being shopaholics and yes. having a shopping addiction. Yes. So raise your hand if you are a shopaholic. Only Rebel's raising her hand right now. No, you definitely should be raising your hand. Bowie raised his tail. Well, he would have been Bowie had one. does not have a tail, he has a nub for a tail. He raised it. Are you going to raise your hand, babe? No. I'm going to raise your hand for you because you're definitely also a shopaholic. No, I'm not. Oh, really? I'm not. Okay. Well, she is, so don't listen to her. Mm-hmm. So how do you know? I First off, what would you call, like, how do you qualify someone as a shopaholic? Someone that's buy stuff to the point where, like, they can't afford it. They might start using their credit cards, which they shouldn't be doing. Um, someone that always has an excuse for, like, why they need it and buys things that are unnecessary to the point where it's not treating yourself anymore. It's just, like, to excess. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a shopaholic is someone, yeah, who maybe, like, goes after that feeling. Like, they definitely feel a high when they purchase things. Well, yeah, they even did studies, but everyone gets that high. But, it's, like, you're, like, addicted have... to the high. Yeah. It's, like, you really, really like it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you still don't think you qualify as a shopaholic? I was obviously kidding. Everyone knows I'm a shopaholic. They see how many outfits I have. I could go probably two, three months. Three months or four months without repeating an outfit. Without repeating an article within the outfit, or...? Um, I probably could have, like, an article, but, like, repeat, but, yeah, I could go. Yeah. I think I could go a month and a half without changing outfits. Mm. Without repeating an outfit. Um, okay, so... 
What do you think about the fact that we're shop Like, is it bad? Is it good? Is it It's neither? definitely bad. It's like, think about how much more money we would have if we didn't, like, buy all these things that we don't need. And think about, like, how it's bad for the environment. Because even though we're not, like, buying stuff and throwing it away, it's just, like, consuming and consuming and consuming. Capitalism, ah. Uh. And, <laughs> yeah. and then, like... I don't know, like, obviously both of us are shopaholics, as we know now, we have reasons for it that we understand. A.K.A. Go Back to Poverty Complex episode. Mixed with also mental health. Mixed with mental health. That was the big eye-opener for me, is I didn't realize that mental health was connected to shopping. Like, for me, when we talked about Poverty Complex before we ever did the episode, I felt like it opened my eyes a lot to, like, oh, this is the reason why I really like things. And even, like, talking to one of my friends, she's always like, yeah, dude, like, we grew up poor. Like, that's why we like things so much. Mm -hmm. Like, we never got to have things. And so now yeah. that we can afford things, it's, like, really, really exciting. So, like, I get that. But, um, yeah, so it's definitely not good. And let's talk a little bit about the, like, relationship between mental health and shopping because that one for me was a new realization why well i just didn't realize like i kind of thought that it wasn't related at all and then the other day so the reason why we're doing this episode right now is because we both just kind of went on a shopaholic binge Mm -hmm. and like we were like oh like we need to stop like that was we're putting some miles on those cars yeah we we went shopping a lot and we like did not need to go shopping so and only one of those places was like it was a necessity but did we go overboard and say yeah i need a new bra but then like let's just replace all our bras Okay, I actually <laughs> didn't have any bras that fit me. So I feel like for me, that one was justified. Yeah, mine didn't fit either. But like, I had zero that fit. Did you have any that fit? See, then I don't, I think that one was justified. Mm -hmm. For me, it was like, so I'm actually returning a couple things. One of them happened when I was returning something. I returned something and then I ended up buying more stuff at the place I returned the thing at. And I was like, ugh, I'm so stupid. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> um, but that's why I like returning things by mail. So like I have two things that I have to return. One, I'm so sad because it's a pair of shoes that I was going to make in a roller skates. Oh but no, they don't fit? Aww. No, they don't fit. So... I was really excited about them, but it's good because I spent a bunch of money at somewhere else, so, like, <laughs> I'm glad that I'm returning it. And then whenever I buy a bunch of stuff, I always go to the closet and go, okay, what can you get rid of and sell to try and, like, make up for the money that I spent? But, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so for me, I didn't realize that, like mental illness was connect can you explain to the audience like how mental illness is connected to shopping i don't know like i haven't researched it enough to well, be like why i just well, know that it is some a side effect of adhd aka rebel and bipolar aka me um so, like, for me, it's, like, something you always know. Like, anytime you watch, like, a movie or a show and they're, like, oh, and it's, like, someone that's bipolar and it's, like, shows them in a manic episode and they are buying and buying and buying and, like, just getting that rush off of it and, like, yeah. Do you... Definitely. Yeah. I mean, do you know, like, what the ADHD thing is connected to? No, it's probably the dopamine that it is. It's probably just, like a higher addiction to the dopamine or something yeah that's if i had to guess like because shopping like they did the study and it showed like that people's eyes even dilate i think we've talked about this on here before to be honest but like your eyes do dilate your pupils dilate and you have this look of like the hunt of looking for everything and then that feeling will last like up to like 10 minutes or something after you buy it and then you're like crash <laughs> 
And you're yeah. like, well, that was fun. And either you're just fine with that or you're like, can't wait to feel that again. And that's why they always say, like, shopping therapy is a huge thing. Like, people are always like, oh, retail therapy. Because when you're sad, you shop because you get that little high and that dopamine from uh, buying things. I feel like for me, it's like that I hyper fixate on, like, something whether it's like me hyper fixating on like my wardrobe and needing it to be perfect or like hyper fixating on like a room or on like the house in general mm -hmm. like and so then I'll just start buying things for whatever it is that I'm trying and then I'll just go like way too hardcore in the paint and then I'll be like yikes and I'll become obsessed with something and think this is it this is my thing of, happy of happiness like I'm going to start scrapbooking, like, I was, like, addicted to this TikToker that, like, literally just journals, but art journals, and I started following all these art journaling things, and, like, was obsessed with it, so I was like, I'm going to do that, so I bought, like, a couple hundred dollars worth of stuff in a short amount, like, I was, like, obsessed, and I was like, I'd have everything, and I was just, like, ordering, 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 like, you really and were. then, and, like, now in the garage room, I have, like, so much random, like, craft, like, stationary stuff, and I'm just, like, huh, I haven't touched that in, like, four months, but, like, that's what happens, and it's just, like, I get, like, a rush, clothing's usually, like, the first thing, but if, like, there's something at the time that I'm, like, this is what I want, then, yeah. And it's bad, because then afterwards, I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's never, well, not lately, like, back when I was, like, struggling, like, really, like, making minimum wage, um, I, I remember being like, this is really bad. Because, like, my daddy used to even say, like, it's like money's burning a hole in your pocket. Like, as soon as you get it, you just, like, run out to go spend it. And definitely that was true. And now it's, like, I have to stash money away and be like, don't touch this. Like, this is all you're allowed to have. But then it does get really bad. And then it's, like, Halloween. So I'm like, let's just buy a Hall Halloween costume stuff. Even though I'm like, you shouldn't. Like, I think that's what I'm obsessed with right now like Halloween costume stuff yeah like I was like searching and I stopped myself so many times I almost spent way too much money on this dress and I was like it probably I talked to myself out of it because I was like it probably won't fit so don't do it and it's like really hard online because unless it's like a shop I know what sizes I wear because it's so easy to spend too much especially when you find brands that are like I've been trying to not just buy fast fashion so, like, it's worse because I went from being able, like, buying one item that's supposed to be better for the environment and last longer, but then I'm like, oh, that could have been, like, three things at, yeah. like, a fast fashion store, and I'm just trying to do my part, but now it's just, like, maybe worse because I want to buy more things, but it is more expensive. It's, like, going like, more into the hole. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not good. And these are, like, obviously... Like, we were saying, like, it's probably bad for us to be together with our mental illnesses that we push together. And, like, we feed each other on. Because a lot of times, like, if I'm, like, going down and I'm like, I want to go to the store. And I'll be like, but don't buy anything. She's like, I'm not. And I'm like, you always do. And then every time I look over and she has her hands full of clothes. <laughs> or random knickknacks. I know. I know. But I always love them. I, I will say that I don't have as much of the, like whatever that dopamine let down, I don't have as much of that. Like, I don't feel like, oh, crap, I need to, like, shop again because I feel like I don't feel that high anymore. It's, like, for me, the high lasts, like, as I'm continuing to use it. Mm -hmm. So, like, I feel like, I don't know. Like, I don't have as much of, it's not as, like, I don't know. I do think that there's, like, I am get super, super proud of myself because I'll take a long time and I won't spend any money at all. And I'll be like, oh, my God, I just saved so much money. And then something, like, snaps in my head. And I'm like, I have to spend money now. <laughs> like, I spent so long. Like, I'll do, like, a month without spending any money. And then all of a sudden I'll be like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Like, I have to spend money again. Mm -hmm. And then I feel so stressed out because I spend too much money in, like, a short amount of time, and it's overwhelming. Anyway, so it's an addiction, and we're trying to deal with it, and I feel like we're majorly exposing ourselves right now, but I'm sure there are other people who struggle with this. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the jokes is, like, 
well, when I make more money, it'll be better because, like, I don't know, like, maybe I won't be so broke and I'll have my shopping addiction, but I'll be able to stay afloat. And then, no, you make more money and then you spend more money. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, my God, like, uh, bitch, you might not be poor anymore, but you're still, like, rich. Like, get it together. <laughs> and it's just, like. I don't know. I don't know why I get so happy in the joy of, like, things that brings me. And it's, like, I know that it shouldn't. Maybe we need to join, like, a Shoppers Anonymous or something. Fuck no. (sighs) I've been in anonymous groups, and I I will never be a part of them again. (laughs) I volunteered at a center one time. It was really interesting. I had to do community service. That's a story for another time. (laughs) Very excited for that story. But yeah, so if you have a shopping addiction, let's go on a shopping trip together. Let's go to the malls of America. (laughs) Let's not. I actually like, I don't know, like I do feel like I enjoy shopping with you, but I don't really like shopping with a lot of people. Like it actually like it's not as fun for me. Um, I think now I have fun shopping with you. But I used to hate it because Rebel's the kind of person that will take, like, 50 items to the fitting room. And I don't try things on. I'm just like, do 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 let's go. And, like, I speed through. And she, like, when the dressing rooms are open, I feel like you would just, like, go so slow and take your time. And we are faster now, but then you'd, like, take it all to the fitting room. And then you'd be like, babe, look at this. Babe, because it's an experience. This. And for me, I'm like, let's get... In and out, in and out of here, on to the next. Which I feel like makes it more of an addiction for you. Because I know what I, I, like, I go in and I'm like, this is my style. Like, right now I'm into, like, 70s rock and roll, so let's go. Then I, like, know exactly what I'm looking for. Like, oh, like, 70s rock and roll, 90s grunge, I have this idea. So if it doesn't fit that genre, then I keep on walking. So I need to just, like, through everything and then snatch the things and then I look at it. And it's not like I just buy everything. I still have the moment of, like, no, not this or no that. But when I am at kind of, like, a high, which, like, lately I've been feeling, like, a little bit of it. Like, I think I'm on a high right now. Um, I will just buy everything. (laughs) And that's the difference between, like, I'm doing pretty neutral mentally because I'll reason with, like, you don't need this. And then there's other times where, like, this last weekend where I'm just, like, I'm so bad on these bras. Like, I know it's a problem because I won't look at price tags. And that's when I'm, like... Like when you were like, so oh, this is price so good. Like when I had to pay for those bras, I had a moment of like, what the fuck did you just do? Like no. that was not your budget. But you told me like, oh, this is my budget. And... Yeah, I went like fifty dollars over. But then what did I do? I said, okay, let's go to Forever Twenty One. But guess what? I bought three things. One was free. The pants were supposed to be twelve dollars. She charged me a dollar. Wildest so experience ever. I spent ever. six dollars for three things, and it was amazing. But then the pants didn't fit. So, but you still only spent six dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And meanwhile, I was like, okay, don't let me spend anything. And then I ended up getting three things. But they're the cutest three things, and I still love them. And I'm still not over the high. And that was like two days ago. See, mm-hmm. I told you. One day ago. Whatever. I think I get over the high once I wear it. Like, I'll wear it, and then, like, I'm like, oh, that was cute. And then I'm like, okay. Yeah. Like, I still will wear it, but I don't get that, like... Excitement. It's like, just now it's a staple piece in my closet. You know, know You know what I really like? I like wearing new shoes a lot. Mm. I really like, like, new sneakers. Uh-huh. These days, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm wearing these new sneakers. Like, they look so fresh. Like... Ah, I'm like obsessed with how they look. Oh lord. Okay. Anyways, I don't want to talk about this cringe shopping anymore. Okay. It makes me feel like you said exposed and uncomfortable, and I feel like it's excess. But I feel like a lot of people I know have like both my derby wives definitely are addicted to shopping one way worse than the other yeah i also think it's a trauma response yeah definitely 
Like, I feel like when you have so much trauma, sometimes you find comfort in things Mm -hmm. and in spaces that are, like, really curated and, like, specific. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of times when you have a lot of trauma, your home isn't like that. And so being able to go and spend time in a place and, like, get things that match a certain, like, vibe Mm -hmm. can make you feel better. Not, that's not advice. That's just me analyzing why we're like the way we are. Anyways, let's move on to the wheel world. Are you a therapist? No, I've just been in therapy since February now, so. So not a qualified. I am pretty much an expert. Nice. Nice. Self high five, rebel. All right, let's move on over to the wheel world. The wheel world. In the wheel world, we're talking about the reality of coming back to Derby. You could take the lead on this one, babe. Ugh. I had Derby today right after work. And that was a thing. You look so good for coming home from Derby after working. Uh Aw. No, like, really, though. So, um... I don't know. It's a trip. Like, I thought I was going to come back to Derby. It's like, yeah, there's been a pandemic. But also, like, I think a year, a year and a half before that, I quit. And definitely was in the best shape of my life because I was in Derby. And then just... (laughs) And stopped being so. So, anyways, um, I thought, oh, I can come back to Derby now and just, like be eased into it and it'll be fine because they have fresh meat but since there's not that many people there and most of the people showing off up are like travel team level it's like they're just like yeah let's just throw everyone together i have noticed that the other fresh meats aren't showing up except for one uh-huh. um so which means that and then people just assume like well show we know you unlike other people in this league actually skated the whole time so you're good, like, and so then they have me doing, like, crazy drills and stuff, and, like, I don't care, like, how much you skate or what kind of skating you do, you come over to Derby and everything hurts. Yes, everything hurts. It's, like, a different, you're using, like, you're getting low, it's a lot of edge work, it's, like, a lot of controlling things, you have to stop a certain way, you have to transition a certain way, like, you have to work on your good and bad ways. So new parts of your body are hurting because maybe you never turn to the right because you turn to the left naturally. So you're not going to be like, oh, let me go the other way unless you're really dedicated like this crazy person over here and want to be a switch footer. I love to try both ways. Yeah, I'm the bisexual. Yes. I don't know. I just think that there's something really great about like constantly challenging yourself and trying things on both sides. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so the body pain is real. Uh, Today was really hard because it was like CrossFit and skates, like bear crawls and sit-ups and squats and then suicides, which is when you like skate one person's doing like workouts until you like skate really fast to the other side of the rink. And then stop as fast as possible. Also, the rink was... Oh, my God. I don't know if they're cleaning the floor at Pigeon Skate Rink. It is so slippery. But it was... I know I've seen them blow... Like, use a blower to get stuff off. But it was extra slick today. And what's crazy is I was just there yesterday and it was fine. But today, like, my toe stops. I turn on toe stop and I would slide back. Do you think it's the wind? The wind's probably blowing dust in and stuff because it's not real walls. So it was probably like, it's, I don't know, but it was so hard. And like, even just trying to skate fast, slipping out, people were falling left and right. So I felt like uncomfortable. But anyways, yeah, so, um, so let me go back. So suicides are like when you skate really fast in and stop the way you can stop the fastest. So for me, it's turn around toe stop. So it would like stop. And then you skate back and do it again. And then you skate back and then you skate back again. And then you let your partner stop. Then they do it. And then you have to do the workout until they finish. So you're like, please be fast. And like, 
Healy was pretty good. She got slowed in, but like for me, I was going fast and I was so happy. It was my bearings that were slowing me down. Oh man! So like when I was doing the sprints yesterday, I was like, I know I skate faster than this, and I was freaking struggling. And I couldn't. I only was able to pass someone barely for a little bit that I knew I could out skate. But it was like I couldn't even coast. So I had to keep. Like, I was getting so tired, and it was because my bearings like were all mismatched. Oh man! So today I was faster. But, like, my body was so tired because of all the squats from yesterday. And it's literally, like, when you start going to the gym again, that's what derby is. And it's, like, yeah, I know I'm more confident. Like, the two coaches have told me, wow, you look so much more confident on your skates. And I do feel that way. But I'm definitely so out of shape. My endurance is shot. And, like, my back hurts. My feet hurt. No, actually, my feet don't hurt too bad. But, like, my my thighs are so sore like I'm not used to having to skate and get so low I have been skating like y'all know like I have been skating mm -hmm. I've been skating more than I've ever skated mm -hmm. and I came back to Derby I've only been back to like two practices and my back hurts so bad like it hurts so bad <laughs> I feel like I can't even do the most basic things anymore like, the most basic things I can't do. Like, as in, like, I dropped my pen right here, right before this started, and I was trying to lean over to pick up my pen, and I was like, I can't do it. Like, I can't reach it because I have extreme pain in my lower back. Yeah, and I already have naturally a really bad butt. So, what I've been doing this season that's different than last time is... When I feel like too much pain, I just stop and I go to the side and I wait it out so I see that they're like working on something new that I feel like I can handle more or I just like wait for a couple minutes and then I'll go back out and pick up. But I'm not feeling like the first time I felt pressure and what's so stupid about that is I probably made my back worse because I would like be like, no, I have to do it. I have to do what they say even though I'm in pain. So I would get like icy hot patches and like. I had them on my, underneath my leggings, I had them on my back, I like covered in them because I was in so much pain. I remember talking to Soy, one of our coaches, and I was like, yeah, like, I don't know if I can do derby, like, my back just hurts so bad, and like, I don't know what's wrong, like, it's never been like this bad before, and she was like, you should go to a chiropractor, and that did nothing, but the more I skated, the less I hurt. So now it's all about, like, co uh, body conditioning, and we're just trying to get back into, like, that kind of skating mode. Yeah, because it is totally different. Yeah. Yeah. I was shook. Struggle bus. You would have hated it tonight. I would have hated it. I I feel like as soon as <laughs> skating feels like an exercise, so like as soon as we're just like all we're doing is exercising on skates, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm not interested anymore. <laughs> yeah, Healy was like, I'm bored. She's like, this doesn't feel like derby. I got bored. <laughs> yeah, and I think that that's, like, an issue with people like me and Healy is, like, I don't actually like working out. I know there are a lot of people that do. Like, they like going to the gym. Like, they like, like, working out. I don't. And that's why skating works for me because it doesn't feel like going to the gym. But as soon as it feels like going to the gym but just, like, with skates on, which just all that means is, like, with weights on your feet, mm -hmm. it's like, no thanks. <laughs> yeah, so... I don't know. It's like, I also had an epiphany yesterday. Um, the coach, aka our friend, the awkward skater, was late. And then I was like, ooh, can I run warm-ups? And I made Rebel ask her. And she was like, yeah. And then Rebel had a whistle. So then I was like, ah, a Capricorn's dream. I have the power. <laughs> I get to tell people what to do. Shove would make a really great coach. I was born for this. So yeah. um, I ran warm-ups, and it's like I'm knowledgeable. And even though, like, I've been gone from Derby a long time, even before the pandemic, I was helping out for a few practices at Red Rum for mm -hmm. their freshies. And I really like to teach people things. And as they say, what is it? Like, those that can do and those that can't teach. Sorry, babe. Just kidding. Some you bullshit. can do it all. That's some um, bullshit. A lot with skating, it's a lot. Like, I have gotten people to drop in and stall and do these tricks, and just because I'm observing and I can see what they need to fix, and it's like a little equation goes off. Um, and for me, it's just like my fear gets in the way, or I just don't 
want to um or i don't understand it and that's fine but i'm really good at like breaking it down or seeing like the little things that people can tweak to like land things so like i was like man this is so much fun like this is what i would want to do and like but we just don't have any like freshies right now but i think in the future like that's what i would want to do like about would be fun but i'm like eh, right now about it i think that like People say, I think that the reason why I hate that phrase so much is because it totally discredits <laughs> all teachers ever. Yeah. And it also, like, takes away the idea that, like, teaching is an actual skill. It's not like, oh, I don't have these skills, so I guess I'll fall back on the thing that doesn't require any skills. It's like, <laughs> no, like, there are a lot of really poor teachers. <laughs> There are a lot of really poor teachers, um, but there are a lot of really bad teachers out there who mm -hmm. aren't teaching well because they yeah. don't have the skill and the talent to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And you definitely have the skill and the oh, talent to be a teacher. Yeah. Anyways, I would love to bout, but I also still kind of feel like, one, my body definitely is not ready, <laughs> not even close, not even kind of. And two, I still don't feel safe to bout because that's like literally getting up in people's faces and sweating and like breathing hard for a long time, like right up next to each other. So yeah. I think that, nah fam, I'm good. <laughs> like, I don't want to do that yet. Yeah, Jesse was saying that they might do it to where, I think it was Jesse. Yeah, that it'll be like smaller. Oh, no, 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 it was Marie. Marie said that they might change the roles to be smaller walls. So it would just be like two, three. Yeah. Isn't it four? It's four, yeah, and, then it's the four and then the jammer. So it would just be like two and one or three and then the jammer comes through. It's so going to make it a people. faster game. Yeah. So it'd be less people on the track, less people so close together. I mean, all other major sports can figure it out. Come on, Wifta. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, is wrestling back in though? I feel like that's what I compare Derby to. All the time is wrestling. Probably, because what they're doing is just making them get constantly tested, but also, like, they make money from it instead of paying, paying to money to be in it. So yeah. if you're making money, you're going to do anything to, like, Definitely. be safe and test negative. And yeah, for sure. be able to still play. Yeah. That's definitely not the case for Derby. Yeah. Um, there, it was, it's just, like, that's the other thing. Like, being a shopaholic, it's fun to, like, buy things and pay for things like that but it's not fun to like pay for things like derby or and, bills That's yeah not fun. and it used to be 40 dollars. i was paying 10 dollars a month even when i left uh stopped playing because i was still in the league because i wanted like the perks <laughs> and so um but then now after the pandemic now it's 60 dollars a month um so yeah. i thought inflation so that's really hard. Yeah. The reason we're in it is because they owed Rebel money from before the pandemic. She had paid for the whole year. So we're like, well, let's just write it out and see what happens. And Yeah, because I definitely can't afford that. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> Not with our shopping no. addiction. <laughs> well, but even just bills and stuff. I yeah. don't know. I feel like... You know, and that's not true for every league. Like, every league is different. Like, that's just our league. Um, so. I don't know. I remember sitting in derby orientation and, like, being like, oh, okay, this seems cool. And then when they went over, like, the price of things. And I was that person that randomly bought Moxie lollies right before Dre Derby. Because I was like, oh yeah. oh, yeah. Like, well, these are cute. And I can wear them for Derby. Win, yeah. win. And then everyone's like. Well, we would recommend a speed boot. And I was like, well, I'm not going to buy another pair of skates on top of these. I'm going to use them, which I did. But then they were like, you need full safety gear. I had no gear. Um, and they were like, that could be about a hundred and something dollars. You need a helmet. That could be $40. Um, then you have to get insurance. Skaters mm -hmm. insurance was like $85. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then you have, and you have to pay that for every year. And then you have to play dues. And then that was $40 a month. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah. It, I remember being in the meeting, was like, being like, uh, what am I, there's no way I can do this. I remember yeah. that feeling. Yeah. And I was just like. I can't. There's no way. And then I had to, I saved up. And then I was like, I think I had used my credit card, which had like a very low limit on the time. And I was like, 
all right, I'm going to like figure this out and do what I can do. And I just made it work. And lucky enough, like the, the skate shop had a slight discount for the Derby members back then. Mm -hmm. But man, that was tough to be like, this is a huge commitment. But then like once you pay for all, you know, all your skate gear, you're like, I'm set for the most part. Yeah, I definitely put all my skate stuff on a credit card because <laughs> I was like, I don't, what? This is so much money. Yeah, but I think a lot of people, especially since there's so many more skaters out there, like, I hear a lot of them like, oh my god, Jeremy, yeah, I want to join that. And, like, I think they're not underestimating, like, one, it's like you're signing up willingly for a cult. Um <laughs> Yeah. Like, right now it doesn't feel like it, but when it's regular season... Oh, it definitely Because is. it's, like, all you know is, like, like, already right now, you probably only hang out with skaters. So, like, in Derby, it's, like, that's your own little world. And then, like, you're also going to bouts, but then you have to be in committees. So, even though you're uh -huh. paying to be there, if you want to be in the league, you also have to be in a committee, which means you have a job to do. So, like, everything's self-run. So, like... Yeah. Yeah. So... And that's true for every league, yeah. for the most part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just like, there's so many, it's me on how high you get, like, there's so many practices you have to go, or you won't be able to And then to there's, play. like, cross-training you have to go to. There's different levels, you have to pass assessments, written and practical. Yeah, that's right. Um, so it's, like, it's cool because you learn a lot, but I think people underestimate, like, the amount of time and money mm -hmm. it takes as well. It's definitely um, time-consuming and expensive. But if you can't afford it, like, a lot of leagues do offer scholarships or, like, reduced rates. But you just have to ask and, like, submit an application sometimes. And they can determine, like, what it can be. Because I know that there were some skaters on scholarship in our league. And mm -hmm. I thought that was awesome. Or sometimes you can coach and then you don't have to pay so there are cool things like that. And there are some leagues that are less expensive than others. Mm hmm And there are some leagues that require less of their people than others. Yeah, and then there's some that's way more, like, they want you there four times a week. Mm -hmm. They want you to do CrossFit. They want you to be on a diet. Um, yeah, it's, like, crazy. Like, the super competitive WIFTA teams, like... I would never want to like I don't want Derby to be my whole life like to that point extreme. There was a moment in time that I thought I wanted <laughs> she that. Did. She was like, I'm gonna be a Derby superstar. I remember like trying to <laughs> manifest that. And I say trying to manifest because I did not manifest it, obviously. And then her first, she even had a YouTube channel called Keeping It Fresh Me. It was Rebel Rouser in her intro. She was in her Derby uniform. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it was so bad. It was so bad. It was so bad. If at first you don't succeed, try again. Do something different. So, wow. yeah, you know, you gotta, it started everything. Look at you now. Yeah. But yeah, yeah so Derby is a thing. It's back. We're still suffering. Um, I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> yeah, I've had, sorry, I've had a lot of people be like, so how do you feel about Derby now that you're back? It's like, I love Derby, and I will always love Derby. I just don't know where I stand with, like, is this going to be my thing that I do? I don't know. Is it going to be something else? There's I don't also know. only between, like, five to eight people showing up right yeah, now. Yeah, so it's totally different. of the price hike, and we're still in a pandemic. So that's, like, hard because... You don't have that full, like, I feel like I'm a part of something, and we're all suffering together, and, like, the two, pe two of those people are juniors, so it's, like, I love my juniors, but, like, it's not that I don't relate, and then, like, I try to censor myself a little bit more around them, because they're our kids. I don't. Yeah, I know. You joined a roller derby league. <laughs> but, yeah, so... Um, it sucks because usually like, hello, we're all getting back and trying to be in shape again, like after not doing this and it all will these be... kids are just like having no problem. Oh yeah, that. But what I was going to say is like, it used to be like a long line of people. So someone would have to do something and then you get to break and then mm -hmm. someone would do something or even in a pace line. And now it's like. Oh, two people went and I, oh, it's my turn again. Yeah, yeah. And then so you're so, I think that's on top of why I'm so tired. Yeah, I'm like, Dang. you're doing way more work than you ever were before. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so, yay, roller derby. 
I hope you're enjoying this cozy version of Skate Date. <laughs> All right, next up, we're doing Find Your Skate Date. Find Your Skate Date is the portion of this podcast where we connect people, skaters, with other skaters in their area. So if you're interested in having yourself talked about and amped up because you need to find some skaters to skate with or a romance with a skater or a mentor or... Um, some new skate mentees, or whatever you want to connect with, send us your bio, your pronouns, and a little picture of you, and your Instagram handle, to dearskatedate at gmail.com. So today's skate date is... Philip! Yay! My name... Oh, hello, skate date. My name is Philip. he, him. I am 19, soon to be 20. Yay! Yay! We love that. <laughs> Yay. A college student, and I live in Gallup, New Mexico. However, I'm planning to move to Albuquerque, New Mexico next spring. Okay, fun story. I was supposed to, like, my last trip, besides the one to Fresno, I was supposed to go to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Like, that was where I was supposed to go before mm -hmm. COVID hit, and then it, it didn't work, obviously. <laughs> okay, I would love to meet some new people and potentially make some skate friends. Currently, I am finishing up my associate's degree and looking to start an apprenticeship in plumbing or electrical wiring. Ooh. Um. Apart from roller skating, I love gardening and hiking. Honestly, anything outdoorsy, I love. But I am always down for some coffee or boba and sitting down for a oh, good combo. Boba. Love this. <laughs> I've been skating since March 2021, and I absolutely love it. Yes. <laughs> I am comfortable going forwards and doing transitions, but still a beginner at the skate park. I have so much more to learn and would love a skate buddy to learn from and learn with. My Insta is at Sandy underscore bearings. Oh, I love that. Name. That's such a good name. That's awesome. I look forward to hanging out with y'all socially distanced and masked, of course. Also... <laughs> Please don't quit, Shove. We love you. LOL. <laughs> skate Date Pod wouldn't be the same without the both of y'all. Yeah, obviously, Skate Date Pod, if it was just me, would not be good. It would just be skate. It wouldn't that's be why, a date. That's why I have to teach Bowie how to talk so no. he can sub. Oh my god, what if we just get like substitutes? Look like, at this picture of Philip. Oh wait, it's really hard to see. I'll post when, him on our Instagram. When Lisa stepped in, where we just had more of that. Like, people, you'd be like, shoves in a mood. I need you to step in for skate date. And it's just random people. You know what? If we just had random people nearby that were willing to randomly step in, sure. But we don't. Because we've never asked. No, I don't want to do that. I want to do it with you. Oh, she's in a, oh, do you? She's in a monogamous skate date with me. I am. <laughs> All right, find your skate date with Philip. All right, let's go to Deer Shovel. In Deer Shovel, what do we do? I don't know. In Deer Shovel, <laughs> y'all send us questions about anything, literally anything. And then we answer them, and we give good answers, we give bad answers. Sometimes we don't even tell you what's the good answer and what's the bad answer. It's all part of the fun. Because we're just full of crap. <laughs> so if you have a question, email us at dearskatedate at gmail.com, and we will answer your email. <laughs> I just got this overwhelming feeling of, like, what are we doing of being so fake? We're just, like, sitting on our couch, like, talking. It feels How's like it when, we're at, when we're at in the garage, it feels, like, so, like, we have our microphones. But here, it just feels like, la, la, we're just, like, talking to the camera. Like, it doesn't feel real. But you do this all the time with skate side chats. I know, but there's, like, it's live with skate side chats. Anyways, 
Okay, so here's our Dear Shovel question. What are... Oh, Dear Shovel. <laughs> what? Dear Shovel, what are some ways to include your non-skating partner in your skate time activities? Ew, dump them. No, what? No. What Buy them have? skates and say learn or it's over. No, that is a not hundred, the way to... A hundred. I definitely think that it is... They don't even want to ski? That's, well, that's red flag number one. Okay. I'm just kidding. What? I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so um, I feel like... Well, I do think that you should try and convince them to ski. But obviously you probably already tried that. <laughs> um, but I think that there are actually lots of things that are really fun to do at skate events that isn't skating you know like most of the time a skate event happens and there's like music or there's like people just like sitting and hanging out like it's not always just skaters skating right like yes and no so like for me sometimes I'm not in the mood to be around people and Rebel's like let's go and I'm like, ugh. So I'll go and, like, I'll have my skates and I might, like, skate around a little bit. But, like, unless there's people I know there that I can, like, they're also chilling on the side. I can, like, hang out and talk with them. Sometimes I have talked to, like, random people in the skate park and that's nice for a little while. But I feel like there's not, like, a lot of stuff to do. Unless you're, like, at a rink and there's, like, arcade games and, like... Well, I mean, because I was thinking, like, maybe, like, at the skate park, like, it's usually at a park, so you could, like, go walk around. Or, like, at, like, Venice, for instance, that's, like, a skating area, but then there's, like, food stuffs. Yeah, but then, like, their partner would be doing that all alone. Is that fun? No. Like, okay. what skate stuff that they can do together without them skating, right? Is that, yeah. It's skate like time activities. non-skating partner oh, if it's and a skate rollout, time activities. Like, if they have a bike or could rent a scooter or something, like, they don't have to be in skates because usually it's all wheels, um, all wheels welcome. So, yeah, like, they could definitely do that, but they would need some sort of wheels. <laughs> if your partner likes filming or photography or if they've never tried it and they want to learn filming or photography I feel like that is an excellent pairing of hobbies like a person who's interested in filming or photography and a skater I feel like those pair well together yeah because it's like I do know some couples that have lasted years and only one of them's a skater it's rare because I feel like you see every skater, roller skater, either dates another roller skater, a blader, or a skateboarder. A blader, yeah. And so it, like, just happens. But then, like, you have a lot of people that, like, have already been together and then they picked up roller skating. So it's usually, like, I think the partners end up being, like, what the hell is happening? Why is this your whole life now? Yeah, it totally <laughs> takes over your life for sure. They're like, what's this annoying podcast you're listening to? It's also roller skate adjacent. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, oh well. But, um, okay, yeah. There's limited things you can do. If you play roller derby, your <laughs> partner can be a official or a ref. Or a fan. Or a fan. <laughs> um, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I don't yeah, know. sorry, we suck. I don't... I'm we kidding. warned you. We said, Dear Shovel, shitty advice. <laughs> Dear I, Shovel is like, why do I need the shovel? To dig through the shit. <laughs> Key <laughs> advice. <laughs> Whatever. I think that was good advice still. Okay. So, guess what, babe? Oh my god, do we have a five-star review? We have another five-star review! Wow. Do you want to read it? Sure. Every week, I look forward to a new episode from these fabulous skaters. They do not disappoint, be it in the real world or the wheel world. Love the positive energy and the push they give to roller skate. Make new skate friends and 
Plan skate dates. Oh, roller skate emoji, heart emoji, roller skate emoji. Thanks, Tulips, for Emmy. A- Emmy loves podcasts? That's so great. I love that. Um, Thank Tulips you. for Emmy. Thank you so much. Emmy loves podcasts. We love Emmy. Skate date loves Emmy. Did you talk about what five star are? So five star reviews is when you go on Apple Podcasts, there's a way you can review a podcast. And when you review podcasts, you can leave a comment. And when you leave a comment and you put five stars, then it makes us do a happy dance and makes us want to celebrate you. So in this part of the podcast, it's where we celebrate you for giving us five stars. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> um, but yeah, we haven't figured out a way to do it on the other podcasting streams. But if you do, let us know. Um, also, if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe to our Skate Date Podcast YouTube channel. And like and comment on the videos and share it with someone you know. Yeah. And if you want to support us, you can shop at our shops or you can donate to our podcast by donating to at Queer Girl Skates on Venmo. If you want to help someone else or celebrate your own queerness and you are local to Long Beach, California, Buy a prom ticket to Queer Prom. Yeah, it's on cheersofthequeers.com. Um, I am hosting a... Me and Shove are hosting. Oh, no. I'm hosting, but Shove is helping me. A glam rock couture queer prom on roller skates. I still haven't been asked to it. Because you're not around enough. You have to be around during the day. Hmm. Um, on November 13th. Chubb, the reason why she hasn't been asked is I'm because... I'm asking Jesse. No, it's because she doesn't like like being embarrassed at work. But right now, all the time I have free, she's at work. That's why she hasn't been asked. I don't like being embarrassed when I have customers around. I don't have customers anymore. Oh, I didn't know that was the I case. literally work with, like, two, three people. Oh, good to know. So, um, anyway, so if you want to support us, you could do that, and I feel like I'm a high schooler, like, playing with my... It's okay, I've been doing most of the podcasts like this, because this is what comforts me, and this is what I do when I have baggy shirts. I love to pull my shirt over my nose, it's like I knew in the future that I'd have to wear a mask. It's like a safety mechanism. A coping mechanism. I feel safe. I'm a turtle. Mm, a turtle. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right, y'all. It's been a real nice skate date again. Thanks for listening to our episode of Skate Date. We love you so much. See you next Wednesday. See you next Wednesday. Pew, pew, pew. Oh, God. Bye. Bye. Bye.